Hey, at least I got to see the sun during that warm spell. Yeah. And there was actually something worth looking at, which is even better. I even saw some of that group. Yeah, that group was nice. And I, I even pulled out the eclipse glasses, hoped, but it was it was wide, but it wasn't very dark. So it didn't have enough contrast to see with the eclipse. I love it when you can see the ones that are big enough, you can just see with eclipse glasses. Wow. Yeah, those those have to, that would be the, that one, that group was the right size. If they're like Jupiter size-ish, you can definitely see them when there's enough contrast. But that one was very long, but the individual spots were very tiny. So there wasn't enough, no, there was not enough darkness <laughs> to, to show. Well, the good news is it is uh, sunny here in Columbus, Ohio, and you will be getting this weather in a couple of days. So. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's, but it's not 70 degrees again, right? I mean, it was really warm here. Oh, well, it's been <laughs> here. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that nice group in a few days. Oh, it's almost at the limb, but there's a new, there's a new group. There's a new group. Good. Yay! Yay! Come and join us. If it ever becomes uncloudy, I'll get to see it. <laughs> yes, the only thing worse than not having any spots is when you finally get spots and you have clouds <laughs> and you can't see them. That's right. They don't do any good. They're being wasted. I mean, I can, I, can't, I don't know if I can show my monitor on my monitor. I mean, I can show them on spaceweather.com. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. There's that second, there's that, there's that second group that's just, oh, there's the, that's, that's the group that's rotating out. And then the other group over here that just popped up. So, yep. Um, Bob Dudley. You guys, this is John O'Neill, my Hello, husband. Oh, hi. O-N-J. Hey, so, John. Uh, let's see. Let me, um, and we know oh, Jerry. Yep, you guys can yeah. go ahead and meet yourself, put your cameras on or whatever. Be yeah. we're very informal here. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'll take my lunch for the message. Hello, Gordon. <laughs> yes, go ahead and eat your lunch. Yeah. We wouldn't <laughs> want you feeling peckish. That's right. <laughs> and Jay's in the middle of outer space, so that's fine. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm out of this world. That's, that's a good place to be. <laughs> Right. And the sky's clear. I mean, I should be out looking at the sun right now. Uh, you have to turn around and look behind you. <laughs> <laughs> here, yeah. Here. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm glad that other group is formed because this one looks like it's going to be another maybe two days out of it and then it'll be behind the sun. Uh, <sighs> all right, there's Kim Hay coming on. Yeah. Kim, unmute yourself. Turn your camera on. Join the party. Here's the camera looking at the fireflies. Ah, the that's fire good. <laughs> it must be cold up there. It is. <laughs> Minus three this morning. I think that weather is coming to our way too. <clears throat> yep. Hello, Gordon. Oh, how are you doing? I'm jumping around looking at all the different workshops. Oh, yeah. Hi, the breakouts, I should say. Yes. Join, join us. We only have one star. <laughs> that makes it easier. Well, yes, easier to watch, I guess. We have one star. <laughs> it's a warmer time sleep. of the day, too. You don't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> that's right. That, that's what I like about it. Yep. And it's easy to find, too. You don't need to find your chart. <laughs> well, that, that's true. I hadn't thought about that part. Yes, yeah. an expensive in, mount, huh? in my backyard, I'm lucky if I can find, with my eyes, I can see maybe one or two stars at night. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's not worry about light pollution either. Yes. <laughs> yep, the sun's easy though. No, it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hi, Philip. We enjoyed your talk. Yeah. Yeah, Philip, that was a very good talk. I liked that. Yeah, it was excellent. We enjoyed it. Simon, my, English, my English is not very well, so I write uh, in the chat uh, about <laughs> me. Okay, <laughs> fine. All right. Astronomy is universal. That's fine. Right. <clears throat> did somebody ask me where I'm from? Yes, I did. Where yeah, you? I'm from the um, from England, UK. Yeah, whereabouts? 
Chatham, Kent. Okay. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Are you a solar observer yet? Sorry? Have you been doing sunspot observations? Yeah, I'm, I last did some observing, I think it was Thursday or Wednesday, I think. There was okay. a nice group on there. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, all there starting is. to come active again, isn't it? We had a long period with nothing. Now it's all starting to go. Which is 25 good. is here to stay. Yeah. Yes. At least for the next 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know those droughts, it just, oh. I mean, when there's so much there, it kind of gets crazy because it's like, where do the group start and end? And and then you're then when you get down to the minimum, it's like, oh, show me anything. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> what I found very interesting, I, I took the uh, choice course uh, on sunspot uh, observing, and I found that very, very interesting. Good. And um, what's interesting, this, this group, that this large group now, uh, I, I like to compare my results with SDO, by counts mm -hmm. with SDO, and also an observatory in uh, Austria called Konzelho. Mm -hmm. And the last count that I had, I got something like nine or 10 spots and they were getting 18. Yeah, are and, they using imaging to do that? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know how they would. Uh, well, I mean, SDO, yes. SDO yeah. obviously is <laughs> imaging. So you can't compare really, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. The American it was interesting. Yeah, you know, it was the interesting. Sunspot the, number, the sunspot the, number we report is based on visual yes, observations, yes. and it has for whatever number of decades it's been going on. Yeah. So it's well, really even Konzelho in, in Austria is visible, but yeah. even they were getting many more. And if you, taking the the choice course, uh, I sort of learned to be a little more restrictive you might say and, and what's a spot and what's a pore etc so my counts i guess now are going to be a little bit less than some of these other people who are counting everything they see as a spot which i did the choice course as well and i really enjoyed it yeah yeah thoroughly yeah. recommend when they do the next one if yeah. you haven't done it do it because it is good fun absolutely absolutely yeah, I had been asked to teach the course, but I'm glad I said I couldn't do it because <laughs> I could never have done as good a, uh, a job as uh, uh, the person oh, who led Ra it. Raffaello Braga. Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No, I had to twist his arm a bit, but once he got into it, it was like, it's great. You know, I was so happy. Yes, he did a fantastic job. Good. And he was happy this year. He taught it last year as well, but there wasn't, um, well, there were no spots. So it made it a little yeah. bit harder. So he was happy that there was something. Yeah. yeah. I hope people don't, it's, it's, when you start getting involved in this at maximum, you'll just lose your mind. It's <laughs> oh, like yeah. the best time because yeah. there's something and it's pretty obvious that's a group. That's a group. That's all you got. Yay. And so it just, then you start dealing with the complicated stuff later. But when you start going in and, you know, the, the, the wolf numbers are 200, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's the nice cat, Philip. My two are sleeping someplace. Yeah, well, when, when, when there are lots of them. groups, when there are lots of groups, what you can do is look at the uh, magnetogram and that will tell you where the groups are so you can sort of maybe cheat a little bit mm -hmm. and use that to see where one group ends and another one begins isn't isn't that biasing your code yeah, well yeah that's cheating <laughs> oh, well, I... <laughs> but 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 what's not cheating is if you you keep your records for you know a few weeks and yeah. then you go back and go, oh, what I thought was, it was yes. real, I mean, you know. Yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. as you watch them evolve, sometimes it's easier yeah. to go back a week yeah. and go, okay, I see what was going yeah. on there. Yeah. I always compare my results to what the comes out in the, um, the bulletin later on. Yeah. If my results don't match what other people results say, I'm 
well, I'm not too bothered about it because it's meant to be unbiased, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. most of it's a personal opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. But that's how you learn as well. I know when I first got started, it was, it was pretty close to maximum and I was having trouble trying yeah. to figure out mm -hmm. groups. And so I would go back and look at what I sent in and what the official numbers were. Mm -hmm. And then I'd work backwards and go, oh, I was dividing these into too many groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, and that's how I learned by comparing after the fact. I mean, I couldn't do anything because my numbers were already submitted. So I wasn't biasing anything. It was just mm -hmm. trying to figure <laughs> out if I was close. I was like, oh, okay. But if I was really off, I looked at the picture because I always draw a picture as well as yeah. do the counts yeah. and go, okay, I didn't quite know what that was. I divided up into too many groups or something. And yeah. Also, I find that the seeing has a big bearing on how many spots you see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. I've also gone from using a visual filter on the front of the telescope to using a Herschel wedge. And I find with the Herschel wedge, the actual image is so much clearer. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've been using a Herschel wedge also. Do you use the polarizing filter as well? I use the continuum. I've got a Botter Herschel wedge and I use the, the Botter uh, green continuum filter. Right. And okay. Mm. Gives a little bit better detail also. Mm. Yeah. I was and quite actually, impressed with the Herschel wedge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and actually I've gone from a uh, 100 millimeter APO down to an 80 millimeter, uh, partly because I also do outreach and the 80 millimeter is a smaller scope and it's gonna be easier to carry around with me yeah. once we start up doing outreach again. Well, Philip well, has been putting some nice pictures in the chat that you guys might want if you're not, if you haven't looked at the chat, Philip's up uh, giving some links to some nice pictures and drawings that he's done of the sun with the, a little yeah, more the active Alpo, right now. Uh, Alpo pictures are, are fantastic. I don't know. I don't know how they get the pictures so good. I can't. So far, my pictures are lousy. I've just started doing that. Oh, that's new. He also, he put, so he put a nice eclipse picture. Yeah, I just saw that. Sun with some sunspots. Where's that? In the chat. Oh, here. the chat. If you look in the chat, he has links to pictures, photographs, oh, oh, and drawings oh. that he's done. So make sure you take a look at that. Oh. There's a lot there. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a 2011. Hmm. Yeah, I volunteered at the uh, Air and Space Museum and the, uh, I was down there with the last uh, transit of Mercury. When was that? When was the last transit? What? Last when was the last transit of Mercury? Was it last November? Is okay. that when it was? Yeah. Yeah. I can remember what um, observing the Venus one, was it 2008 or something like that? Yeah, it was about 2008. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw that one. Well. The Astronomy Society, yeah. 20, 2012, 2012. Was this, that was the second one. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I saw that one. I think I missed that one. Yeah, it was cloudy for the second one. I just saw the first one myself. Mm. Yeah, eight years apart, 2004 and 12. 12. And then you got to wait 125 years. Yeah. <laughs> we both saw both of them, but yeah. not together. Yeah. Oh, we did see the second one together. So yeah. we didn't know each other on the first one. I mean, we, didn't, yeah. we weren't together yet. Yeah. So that was kind of funny. Isn't there another total eclipse in America at some stage in a few years? 2024. Uh, 19, or rather 2024. Yeah. 2024, right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. We were planning to go to Argentina in December for this one, but yeah. it got. No, you won't be going to December. We're not going. <laughs> yeah. Astro Trails has half our money. Oh, right. <laughs> and they're not giving it back. They're not giving it back. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
anyway. Uh, pure profit for them. Yeah. <laughs> well, they should thing. give it back. Well, one would think, but yeah. mm. they, they had it where if they canceled, they'd give it back. But if you didn't want to pay more money for the last installment, then you were automatically canceled. Yeah. Asked for final installment and a surcharge. And, and the trip no longer exists. <laughs> So, so we would have had to pay more money in the, in order to have a chance of getting our money back. Oh. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, I think you said. No. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what parts of the Maracruz the eclipse to be seen from? From comes in over Mexico and up to Texas and up to the Great Lakes and into yeah, then, yeah, then off into Canada. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's tracking up through yeah, America, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Diagonally through yeah. the whole country. Yeah, yeah. there's one yeah. place in, uh, I think it's Ohio, something like that, where uh, the two paths cross. Mm. So that if you lived in that spot, you would see two within, okay. what, 12 years or something like that. Mm. I think it might pass over Delphos, Ohio, where? famous town. Where Leslie Peltier was from. I can remember observing the eclipse from the UK in 1999. And of course, it was yes. cloudy, as it would be in the UK. Yeah, I was in uh, Germany for that one. And uh, there was an IOTA meeting in Stuttgart. But we got in a car and drove to Strasbourg and just stopped by the side of a road because it was cloudy. And mm. the clouds opened up right over the eclipse, <laughs> right during totality. Oh, yeah. Absolutely perfect. It planned perfectly. Yeah. I was in Bulgaria for that on the Black Sea coast. Um, now, the interesting that. thing is that that was in the same Saros cycle is the la from the last one uh, in the US. Mm. So it was 18 years apart. Mm. I suppose the next one in the United States doesn't go anywhere near New Jersey State, does it? Uh, no, it'll probably oh. be about 70, 80% there. Okay. So I've got a brother who lives out there. Um, he lives in um, West Windsor near Princeton. Yeah. And then you just have to hire a car and head west. Yeah. Not too far away. <laughs> I think I have to go out there and we have to drive out to it. Yeah. Kim, I see your cat sitting by the fire now. She's here. Yeah, yeah she's always cold. <laughs> yeah, I've got two Orientals and they have no undercoat, so they're also always cold. They sleep right next to me at, at night. One sleeps against my chest and the other sleeps against my back. Yeah. <laughs> this one usually has her face blanket. <coughs> Hey, Lindsay. Her sister's a cat. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so you're you're popping into the different uh, uh, different rooms. I am. Well, we were just talking about eclipses and cats and <laughs> and Philip is sharing pictures in the chat for us. Yeah. yeah. It's some nice ones. Click on it. Ah, nice prominence. Nice. Wow. That's beautiful. Great prominence. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I always enjoy in the solar bulletin now that they've started to usually have um, an image from somebody on that last page. I enjoy those images. I look forward to seeing what's next. Well, we should get Philip to send you one. Yes, um, he would send it to uh, Rodney though, because Rodney uses a different yeah. um, platform for creating 
uh, those PDF files than I do. He uses something that I don't have, so I won't be able to put it into what he has, but he would send it to Rodney or Chris or Kim, one of those section chair leaders that puts together the Solitan Bulletin every, Solar Bulletin together every month. I would definitely send, I would definitely send it to, to Rodney. Rodney. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can put Philip for you his email in the chat if you want yeah, to put that get there. Him. Uh, let me just look it up real quick. I get emails from uh, Alpo, uh, and of course, their big in interest is the photography. And as I said, some of the photographs in mm -hmm. white light and calcium H alpha are mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm just going to say, if you aren't familiar with the solar bulletin, yeah, that's right. And for anyone who's not familiar with the Solar Bulletin, um, I'm going to type in where it's available on ABSO's website in just a minute. Thank you. That's great. Is there anyone that's um, brand new to the solar section or just getting started with it or wondering how to get started with it that's in this session? No. I think they're all veterans. All veterans. I've been doing this for about 30 years. Wow. I know. I've, a lot of people have been doing it for so long. I'm really always amazed at um, how long people have been observing for. It's so impressive. Do we know how many people actually in the solar section? Do we know what the membership is? Um, it goes up and down. It's around 60-ish, modulo, yeah. 10, yeah. 20, either direction. I mean... You know, it's sometimes you get when the sun's really active, you get a lot of people in there and yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. it gets a little quieter. Although this minimum, there was still a good number of people. I know. I was impressed how many people stick stuck with it, the whole minimum. So we always seem to have at least 60, you know, re people reporting sunspot observations every month. It's great. That's so cool. Well, it's it easy when with it's the been around all of that with the 10 good. minutes and you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't take long, no. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Well, if there are no spots, you just look, oh, <laughs> nothing, and then close up and go away. Yeah, but a negative observation is as good it's as still an It's right? still a number. Yeah, that's a number. It's still data, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wouldn't know what it was without that. That's right. Without a negative that. result negative is still number. a result. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I was about to say, with the lockdown, there's probably more people had time to do observing of all sorts, thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, here in the U UK, when we first started lockdown about April, the weather was brilliant. Yeah, I'm not sure on the statistics. I don't think it's, well, I don't know. In Stella's report tomorrow, show because like, I helped her gather the data. I just don't remember what it was, but I don't think anything struck me as being. We all gathered so much data. I don't think yeah. any of us know it anymore. Still get the same number. It. Like we're always increasing on the number of observations that are sending to us, but it's hard to tell whether there was an extra bump because of the COVID or anything. But we certainly had a huge participation in the webinar series we had this summer. Yeah. Was, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah that was good. I, I hundreds, uh, hundreds of people in each one. Yeah, it was great. Well, I think with, with people being stuck at home have to find things to do. Yeah, in astronomy. Even uh, I'm a stamp collector, and I noticed that uh, uh, even that's in increased. More people are collecting stamps. Right. All right, I'm going to pop into other sections. Okay, bye, Lindsay. Thank bye. you. Bye. Ooh, nice that, to meet you. That last picture that Philip posted has some really nice faculty in it. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. Another eclipse one, too. Oh, yeah, these fellas. Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jay, when you collect stamps, do you collect astronomy themed stamps? <laughs> uh, no, I had thought about doing that. What uh, our interest uh, was uh, when there is a, a new stamp comes out. Uh, there used to be ceremonies. Now, they're, they have them now, but now it's all virtual. But they would have the ceremonies in the city that was relevant to the stamp that was coming out. And they would produce a program 
uh, which listed the participants. And we would sort of collect those. And we actually got into the business of selling these. Mm -hmm. uh, we've stopped that, but I've gone back into just collecting those. But that, that's what I was, but I thought about, you know, topical also. And if it were topical, it would be something astronomical related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elements oh, Phillips set up. That Phillips got a little, little, little mercury bite taken out of the limb of the sun there. Oh. With, with spots. I see this picture. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> right on the edge. Wait, I think I have one of yours on this computer. Yeah, I used the sodium filter for the last Mercury transit when I was down at Air and Space, and that showed it up very nicely. Mm. Yeah. Oh, bye, Ken. He's gone. Somebody popped in for a second. Looks Christina yeah, thing yeah. popped in for a second, and then popped back out again. <sighs> what time is the what? next session? That's it for today. Yeah. That's it for today. We're we're. They didn't want people in front of their computers for too long. So yeah. every day is set for like two and a half hours. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Three hours. Yeah. Oh, now he, now, now Philip is teasing us with green flashes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh yep. That's a green flash. <laughs> Philip, what time is it in your, in Russia at the moment where you are? You might have to write it because he. All right. Okay. Yeah. No. Mm. All right. Hello, Eileen. Yeah, that's nice. Hi. You can you can uh, turn your camera on if you if you want to. We're a, we're a small social group here. Yeah, come join us. Oh, start video. There she is. Hello. Hi, Hi, Eileen. Hello. How are you? Good. Enjoying the talks so yeah. far. Yeah. Good. Oh, what have you been up to? Uh, well, I was observing from my driveway. I was looking at SS Signy for a while mm -hmm. and doing some recordings for that. Good. But started a new job and that's <laughs> become, oh. become quite stressful. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. In this age. Especially with all the COVID-19 restrictions. What have oh, you guys yeah. been talking about? Um, well, Philip is sharing on the chat, he's sharing some pictures he's made. <clears throat> we talked about sunspots and chasing eclipses and stamp collecting. Stamp collecting. <laughs> cats. And cats. All sorts of, cats. <laughs> All sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody here looks at the sun. So, you know, we're not trying to like, we're not trying to bring them to the dark side because everybody's already here, so. <laughs> Won't be seeing the sun today, though. No. We like the sun for many reasons. Yeah. It's amazing learning about sunspots and other stars. I always find that fascinating. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> when was the last time that you were out of state, Eileen? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the general consensus. <clears throat> Probably in, in January. Yeah, I remember the, the cellophane, though we weren't actually on the hill, but the club meeting in January, yeah. And then in February I was at a conference in Albuquerque and that was the last conference I the last real conference I've been to. I was in London in December. Yeah. So. That was out of country. 
Yeah. Well, I, I caught COVID-19 early. I got it in March. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. I got it in the supermarket. Oh. Everybody was coughing all around me. My husband got it, too. Oh, God. Yeah. That is terrible. Was it? It, yeah. <laughs> I had to take care of him because he was worse than I was. And we oh. both had it at the same time. Oh, gosh. But friends brought over soup and... Um, and um, I, you know, neither of us could eat the first week. It was not not pleasant. Yeah. Aches and pains yeah. that you never never knew in parts of your body that you never knew. Mm. And no no sense of taste or smell. It's just weird. Uh. You put something in your mouth and it has absolutely no taste at all. It's horrible. Do you still have any symptoms now? I'm tired. Yeah. More tired than I used to be. I'm tired. I still, you know, get up and do things, but I don't have the same amount of energy I used to have. Yeah. Well, when we go to the supermarket now, we have the N95 ah. mask covered by a surgical mask <laughs> and a face shield. <laughs> so what, about, what about gloves for your hands? I love the gloves and then yeah. we throw them into the floor of the car and use Purell mm -hmm. once we get it back into the car. Yeah. And then we we also wipe stuff down with bleach. So the supermarket is kind of the scariest thing we do, but sure. that's... Yeah, you know, the markets that I go to are open for seniors at certain times. Yeah. Oh, there you uh, are. So that's, that's when I tend to go and there are very few people in the market at those times. Well, we did that once and it was really crowded. It was worse. Yeah. <laughs> that's really? what I heard. It's more crowded during senior time than no. mid-afternoon mid or mid-morning. Mid we go around oh, we after talk in the morning. On a so. Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, hi, uh, Bob. Well, one of the, one of the stores is open uh, from six to seven in the morning, uh, the giant and the, for seniors, and then the Whole Foods from seven to eight. So yeah. I tend to do Whole Foods more than the giant. Yeah. Six o'clock is too early to get up. Hard, yeah. How are you, Bob? Good, good. I haven't seen you in a while, that's great. You know, hopping around here, different sections. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of maybe looking at some of the other ones too. What about, you hear that's one of my cats. <laughs> that's an interesting picture that uh, Philip posted. It's four pictures of the sun sort of sewn together. We have a, an eclipse with a sunspot, a Mercury transit, a Venus transit, and the International Space Station, it looks like. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that's oh, wow. cool. Oh, yeah. Wow. Huh. At the same time. Look at this Mercury and Venus wow, at the a, same time. What a coincidence. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's funny. Uh, wow. an eclipse as well. And an eclipse. So when's that gonna happen? For real. <laughs> Wait for millions of years. Hey, it's 2020. Anything can happen. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Mercury, Venus, and the moon all at the same time. This is one of my pussy cats. Oh, yeah. Gosh. That's a cat, too. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Bob, didn't you recently celebrate an anniversary, a observing anniversary? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. First observation, 1965. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations. I, I to be a, a solar observer with uh, Casper Hosfield. Yep. Oh. That's great. Yeah, Cap Cap recruited me and he recruited me for the uh, uh for the radio relay league. And then he said, Oh, you're you're doing pretty good and you should like send these to the AEVSO. And I said, What's that? <laughs> and then the rest is history. <laughs> you're in. That's great. Yeah. Has there been a lot of change on the on the solar mass ejections with the reverse of polarity and all that? No, no, nothing. No, I mean we we mean you know solar cycle twenty five is yeah the twenty five you can tell it's the twenty five yeah I mean there's still some in the polarity yeah. we could still get some twenty four spots but they would be at a, a different latitude. And, yeah. 
but uh, those should be getting rarer and rarer and getting fully 25 and there have been some flare some flares and stuff i on space weather they do <coughs> announcements when you know the sun is active and there's a likelihood of aurora and so forth but there's some aurora trips being planned by different groups and i i certainly don't want to spend money and then not see anything mm -hmm. you went on one didn't you yes. This one? An Aurora trip. Yeah, I went to Alaska to see the Aurora. Mm. And it's nice. And also went to Iceland. And more recent years, we went to Iceland as well. Yeah. To see the Aurora. It was nice. We were there, what, seven, six nights? And we saw it for four nights or something yeah. during the time we were there. Yeah. I'll I... wait till we get to Solar Maximum. And then I'm going to go out to Iceland, see if I can see any Aurora from there. It was fantastic. You don't Canada. actually have to wait till Solar Max. No. no. One of my sons lives in uh, Switzerland. Yeah. So I was thinking of taking one of these Iceland air trips and, and mm. maybe stopping in, in Iceland like on the way thing. there. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you see any that were structured like bicycle wheels? I saw an Aurora back, I think it was 2005 or six in Massachusetts. And it started off with a huge splash, a splash of magenta, but then I saw green, a green bicycle wheel. It's the only way oh, I can describe cool. it. Oh, and I it, saw one that the first night we were in Iceland, we came out of dinner in mm -hmm. a restaurant and we looked over the sky. You know those like toy, those little blower things you use on New Year's that have the little curl? Uh -huh. It uncurls and then curls back up. I saw something just like that in green. Mm. It was like rolling out and it was so weird. Like we just, well, we hadn't even gone somewhere dark. Like we just came out of dinner mm. and then we saw this thing and it was, it was incredible. And I think when we were there, um, there was a forecast one to be so good that they decided to shut out all the streetlights in Reykjavik. We were out in the country, <laughs> but we heard on the news it's like, it's unusual, but once in a while they do that so everybody can see it. I mean, I think the bicycle wheel effect is the radial effect. Was it high up in the sky? Yeah, um, no. Well, well, let me see if I can remember. Yeah. I was at a star party. This is funny. I was at a star party and it began. So I ran inside to tell the speaker that there is an aurora going on. So I went inside, I got the speaker's attention and I shouted, there is an aurora going on, everyone should come outside. And the speaker didn't understand me and said, tell Aurora, it's not time to go outside yet. Come in. <laughs> I don't think, I thought it was closer to the horizon. The magenta was very high. Yeah. But the, the green wheel was lower. Oh. The last large aurora I saw was in 2002 at uh, Cherry Springs, Pennsylvania, a dark oh, sky yeah. site. And it lasted much of the night and it was very pretty and beautiful, but we were also all gathered there to see faint galaxies and faint stars, which of course got all blotted out by the aurora. Yeah. Oh, that darn aurora. Poor, poor thing, poor dear. <laughs> we all laughed oh, once it. in a lifetime event, I'm so sorry. No, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but there, there were, were those of us who were wanting to get back to mm. this too. Well, what, I, I live down like in Maryland, in the uh, Washington DC area, and I I think I did see one faintly a number of years ago, uh, but they very seldom get down here. I seen one in my back garden about 2000, 2002, I think it was. Yeah. yeah Which I was the famous one, Daniel. Mm. My yeah, first. You're a little bit farther north than uh, we are here. My yeah. first aurora I saw at Stellafane, in fact, and it was. Um, we were all sleeping out. This was years ago. Oh God, what year was that? It was like 1978. And so it was before they had 
like everybody was just sleeping under the stars in a big row with all these sleeping bags out by the pink clubhouse or something like that is my memory of it. And they, everybody woke up and said, ah, oh, there's an aurora and all that. And everybody was like waking up the next person in line <laughs> and went all the way down. And then once in a while you got one of the Canadians from the RESC and they said, oh, let me sleep. I see him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny. Well, hopefully we'll get some more people interested in solar observing now that the sun is waking up again. Yeah. yeah. Is there a way to zoom in on the sun to see the spicules? Is there a particular size aperture you need or? Uh, I don't know. I, as I said, I, I uh, get these pictures from uh, Alpo people uh, who are taking, uh, doing the photography. And you can almost see that. You can see a lot of solar detail with some of the photographs they're taking. And they're using like 80 millimeter telescopes. Hmm. I don't know how they do it. Sun parties. I, I typically on July 4th like to set up um, a, a, a scope uh, either hydrogen alpha with a friend or I use a white light. But I always want to show people spicules and everyone only shows the whole disc and looks for prominences, but it'd be yeah. nice to show other, other yeah. features. But I don't know what how to do that. The limb of the sun is always so hard just because of that, the seeing. That's where I tend to have the worst see, see the worst yeah. seeing is right on the yeah. limb, so. That's going to be a problem. I mean, the really good pictures I've seen are so zoomed in that. Yeah, well, that's it. They're using uh, yeah. uh, Barlow's and, and uh, things like that. <clears throat> Could you see it with the naked eye? Spicules? No. Yeah. No. Mm. I don't think you would. No. Got to really get in uh, high magnification. Mm -hmm. But they go up and down and up and down. That would be that would be fun to get kids excited about looking at a star, you know, looking you know, interested in astronomy. Yeah, the um, I go to one of the farm markets uh, locally, and uh, about a year or two ago, I did take a telescope out there one or two times, and uh, I guess it must have been. It, it, might have been two years ago when the sun was more accurate. But I think maybe next year, of course, when things get a little bit better and we've all been vaccinated, uh, I will uh, maybe go out there again and either take a white light or uh, maybe a uh, sodium uh, or, or a H-alpha uh, telescope and set it up there. Yeah, people during the day are, are shocked that, that the sun is really a star when they look at it. First, they're afraid- they're gonna go blind. <laughs> right, they're gonna go blind. That's right, yes. So I always have to put up a sign that says safe, safe viewing of the sun. Yeah, yeah. But I always wanna show more detail, especially when there are no sunspots. Yeah. It'd be better to show at least some other features well, even when we had zero sunspots, if you had the Hydron Alpha telescope, there was always yes. normally something going on, wasn't there? I mean, yeah. 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 I used the Daystar Quark um, problems filter. Yeah. yeah. Daystar Quark? Uh, Daystar Quark, yeah. The the problems one, because you can get one for the um, chronosphere as well. Oh. I think. I think I'm going to buy the one for the chronosphere as well because I'm quite impressed with the uh, day star one. Yeah, I've got one of the quantum filters, but I don't use it that much. Mm. But uh, I've got my club's Coronado, and so that's the one I tend to use. What size is that? Uh, I think it's a 60. Okay. Yeah, we have one of the PS2s that we we use when we want to, mm -hmm. but I mostly do white light with the students. 
and I we have one of the little the sun spotters. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That that works especially when you're working with little kids because they can all sort of gather around and look at once and they can touch it and you don't have to worry about them blinding themselves or breaking yeah. something or yeah, I volunteer at the Air and Space Museum in DC and uh, we've got an observatory there and uh, you know, pre-pandemic uh, we would be open primarily during the day if the sky was clear and uh, this is what we would do. They, they uh, had a four inch refractor as a finder on a large uh, telescope, 16 inch, and they put a, um, uh, what is it called? I forget what it's called, but it's, it's sort of an inverted flower pot with a screen on it. And you'd get a solar image about 12 inches in diameter, which is good when you've got large crowds because you can get a number of people looking at it at one time. And then we would bring telescopes outside of the observatory and then we would uh, maybe bring out an H alpha telescope also. One of those like sun funnels uh, where it actually comes out and it shows it on the, like from below. On a screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, one of the other telescopes we had, by the way, was a Dobsonian which is not just on a Dobson mount, but it's got John Dobson's signature on it oh. because it was a telescope that he actually made. Oh. Gosh, cool. So it's a real Dobsonian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's it like to use? What's it, oh, the Dobson? Yeah. Uh, actually very good. Um, mm. It had a, on the front, it had a partially silvered mirror at about a 45 degree angle. The mirror is unsilvered. And then there was a uh, welding filter also inside. Uh, so you got a green image, but the, uh, she was very sharp and detail is very good on that. What aperture was that, sorry? It was a six inch. Okay. Yeah. Mm. What focal length was it? I think it was an F8, so it was probably 48 inches, standard. Yeah. Well, we're, we're getting near the end of our time. So if you guys have any anything that you'd like from the solar section, if you'd like to give any feedback, is there anything the solar section could do to enhance your viewing pleasure or to feel <laughs> wanted or welcomed or useful? Four spots. <laughs> let us know and we'll, you know, you've got the ear now. So, you know, let us it's know what we can do to... Spots, that's all. I don't have those powers. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Get up there with a Sharpie. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Well, all I can say is keep up the good work. It's great to have so much yeah, data. fun. I enjoy it. And then, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a warmer part of the day. Hmm. Sky's supposed to be clear tonight. Maybe I'll go out uh, and uh, set things up. And the other thing is that, that with, since it's a, a short period of time, because you're going out there and you're making a little drawing, you don't actually have to be really uh, aligned exactly with north. Uh, so the, the, that doesn't have to be polar aligned. Mm -hmm. Whereas obviously nighttime observing, if you want to do variables, anything like that, you got to be really aligned. I find the older you get, the less you want to go out in the dark. <laughs> I like going out in the daylight when it's nice and warm. Exactly. Well, that, that's <laughs> one of one of the reasons I do solar observing. Yeah. Especially in the winter. <laughs> I want to start doing some more variable star observing, but I find it sometimes quite hard to motivate myself to go outside in the dark. You know? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, if you just do the binocular ones, there's not a lot of setup time, and so you can yeah. Yeah. you won't get too yeah. cold. So that's what I'm thinking about doing doing the binocular ones. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is I have a uh, uh, what's called an essential tremor, so I'm, there's no way I'm going to hold binoculars steady. Mount. I, a mount. I would have to put it on a mount. Put it on yeah. mount. Yep. Mm. Which is a thought.
get one of these parallelogram mounts. Yeah. Well, you could just use a camera tripod with an yes. L and L. Yes. Yes. And leave the L. Yeah, I've got, on yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice cozy chair, little table with a glass of wine. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the more wine you have, the more wobbly your light curve is. <laughs> Some snacks, you know, tray of a tray of uh, peppery uh, um, salamis and cheeses. <laughs> well, this sounds nice. <laughs> we do that in my driveway. <laughs> well, actually, if you We've get interested, till dawn. if you get interested in uh, exoplanets, those take about four hours. Yeah. So that's perfect time for. Uh, a little uh, wine and, and cheese, etc. <laughs> well, that's that's. I need to buy one. I, I only have. I've made uh, made a daub, a, a homemade daub, the mirror and everything. And I um, have another homemade daub that someone someone sold to me. And I have a, a Unitron, a, four, a Unitron refractor. Oh wow, that yeah. That's, I always dreamed of having one of those. Yeah, that's the one I use for solar observing because it's it's such a crisp image. Now I have several uh, APO refractors, which obviously are a little bit better in quality. Uh, one of mine is a 130 millimeter uh, Takahashi, which is mm. very, very nice. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just paid to re repave our driveway. <laughs> so now it's flat. <laughs> so I can start saving towards equipment. <laughs> I can't think of anything I want improving about the solar section. I think it's very good myself. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What would you recommend for a hydrogen alpha scope? Like I said, I like our PS2 that we that the school has. It's it's small, but it's very convenient to use. So, and it's all enclosed. I mean, all it is is a hydrogen alpha scope. So you don't. It's all mm. you just take it out of the box and screw it on, and there you go. Yeah. How much zooming can you can you do on it? How how? Not really. It's not meant for zooming in, really. But so it's for the for the whole the whole disc. Yeah, it's, it's a whole disc. Yeah. At least with a reasonable size eyepiece. Yeah. Yeah. What, well, one, one of the things I wanted to do is have kids draw prominences. Hmm. So we we did that, but it wasn't my telescope. And I, I don't remember what it was, but someone was able to magnify prominences enough. Yeah, you put a Barlow on something like that, that uh, would uh, expand it, uh, the image. Yeah. All right, well, thank you all for attending yeah. our yeah. solar party here. Nice to see uh, you all. Yeah, nice to see you all. And yeah, yeah been really good. Really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. Take good care. Fun. Thank fun. you all for sharing. Yeah. Thank okay, you for the talk, Philippe. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Yeah, yeah Philip. thanks, Philip. Philip. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are very nice. Mm. Thanks thank for the talk as well. Mm. All right, we'll look forward to seeing your, your spot counts for this month. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, it's going to be more than that this month. There's one group that's got a lot of spots in it. Yeah. And I think there's supposedly another one. Coming yeah, I just on. saw one on spaceweather.com that's popped up. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. See you all. See you. Back to them. Bye. Bye. Keep self, keep well. Yes, be yeah. healthy. Yeah. Be healthy, everybody. Bye. 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 Recording.